welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Winston Welch, Executive Director of the Outdoor Circle. Today, we're going to talk about keeping Hawaii clean and green. Welcome, Winston. Tell us about how you got involved in the Outdoor Circle. Uh, well, actually, it's interesting because my first encounter with the Outdoor Circle, I was working for a company that um, uh, I had mentioned about doing some some advertising. I was new to the islands relatively. This is decades ago. And uh, the my boss said, oh, no, 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 we, you can't do that. You can't have advertising outside because the the Outdoor Circle. And I said, <laughs> what's the Outdoor Circle? I, uh, why can't we have ads? But then as I've come to realize, and many, many people have told me over the years is, right, the Outdoor Circle is the reason why we have this beautiful, pristine environment that is uh, unencumbered by billboards and offsite advertising and blighting right. our, our visual environment so this is it is a really rare thing that we have here that we're not uh it's not obvious what you don't have in something like that until you go to the mainland or, or you're driving down the road and you know that the high desert or in, or anywhere and you see these giant billboards you know to eat this product or shop here and it's just marring the landscape we don't have that in hawaii and that's exactly because of the outdoor circle so in addition to uh, the billboards, what kind of other missions does the Outdoor Circle have? Well, the mission is pretty simple and pretty broad. So it started in 1912 by uh, a group of women who just was were looking at the city and saying, OK, we can make this better. It comes out of a, of a city beautiful movement uh, after they had traveled and seen what other cities and countries had been doing. They said, we need that in Honolulu. We need trees to uh, beautify the, the dusty landscape uh, to uh, reforest the, the, the denuded hills of, caused by grazing and, and, um, and, and chopping down uh, native trees. So our mission is very simple. Uh, it's to keep Hawaii clean, green, and beautiful by preserving, protecting, and enhancing our environment. Now, what that means is, of course, we have a, a, a that's a pretty broad um, mission statement, but essentially, um, it's it's looking and seeing what's what's a, a visual blight, especially in our environment, and how do we how do we remove that and replace it with something beautiful? So it's very much a you know our all of the founders, of course, this is 1910. So this is a very strong community organization with uh, supported by our, our the, the, the life force of any organization is its members. And we have branches on uh, all of the islands. So the branches are very uh, local and concerned about what's important to them in their neighborhood. And they run the gamut of like on the North shore of Oahu. Oh, they do things like protecting the, the view planes from uh, the road or uh, to, uh, the bike path up there to lots of planting and beautification. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and every every branch has its own thing. So that they focus on. But as a, they all come together, we look at the branches like a branches of a tree, and then the trunk is uh, coordinated by you know or stabilized by the uh, central office, which is the five hundred one c three. So um, I saw that um, you guys also um, had a tree giveaway recently. Actually, I did get a tree. I had my husband go and get a tree. So we received a Kukui nut tree um, and uh, it's in our backyard now. Um, how did you guys obtain these trees and uh, what kind of, um, do you have any other ideas for other tree giveaways i think this is great for the community uh okay well tell me what, what where did you get your tree in manoa in manoa okay so you probably got that from our uh, manoa branch of the outdoor circle mm -hmm. uh what we did this last uh arbor day in hawaii and arbor day in hawaii is the uh let's see it's the first saturday following the first friday in november we're a little bit different here because of uh, the makahiki season it's a good time to plant trees here in in the winter um as as the rains start to come so what we did this year uh, a little bit uh, more special than normal was because it was our 110th anniversary in uh 2022 and also the 100th anniversary of the honolulu shade tree commission which the outdoor circle was instrumental in forming um we did an all branch activity where we gave away trees 
Uh, at all of our branches, it was supported by different grants, especially uh, one from Arbor Day. And so we just look to bring the community together because this is not just about you know trees and beautifying our environment, but it's also about community. It's about bringing people together and realizing that each person has uh, an impact on what they can do that's that's positive in their community, even just for their own their own home. But that tree that you planted in a few years will become a beautiful place uh, of shade and something else for your neighbors to look at and places for for birds to come and and, uh, and nest in. So. It's drawing everybody together in this great event, and we generally do this uh, every year in Manoa. They that branch specifically does do uh, their tree giveaway, and uh, that's a, a tradition that they've had. Uh, we do it in our other branches as well, uh, just depending on uh, you know what the desires of the branches are. But m most branches, this is a, a core activity of the outdoor circle, is uh, giving away and planting trees, such that basically every large tree in the state that you've seen that's been planted was either planted by the outdoor circle or advocated by the outdoor circle you know not 100 percent, but uh we've had a major impact in the state in parks roads schools um the, the shopping centers everything so winston i saw on the website that kona actually had a project where the woman there planted a bunch of trees um and i don't know if um i saw that on the website i thought that was pretty cool and I'm supposing that all the branches, like you said, had, you know, like you said, the North Shore plants the trees and on the trails. Um, is it mostly around the trails or on the side of the road? I think in Kona it was on the side of the road that they planted the trees. Uh, they had beautification projects also, you know, uh, coming out of the airports and those sorts of things. So oh, it's not, not, not just you know, trees, but it might have been the, the beautiful Bougain views you might see on the highway or oh. um, encouraging people to plant in their own yards because actually, you know, while we have this great history of of planting trees and they're not just the trails um we actually did an interesting thing with google trekker where uh, we mapped all of these incredible trails uh with a 360 degree view carrying this this machine so you can virtually visit all kinds of trails and places in hawaii uh, you can check that out on the website outdoorcircle.org but oh, nice. the, the organization is just focused originally sort of on a cityscape which was you know, putting in sidewalks and advocating for those, uh, getting the 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 commission for for parks and you know, to, to plant more trees in the public sphere, uh, as well as you know, encouraging things like on the military bases or uh, in our schools. So the reach has been broad and uh, deep, and it just continues. And it's you know, it's planted one tree at a time. It wasn't as if we we planted uh, a million trees in a day. It takes okay. over a century to do this. So it's a collective okay. response that is necessary to uphold and maintain. And we're always looking for um, new members to uh, contribute and join this really powerful organization in the history of Hawaii that's unique to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And what do members do? How do you become a member? And um, do the members just uh, donate money, uh, money or do they um, volunteer uh, for the tree giveaways, plant trees, I'm assuming? Well, uh, you know, membership is different things to different people. Uh, essentially, what members do, and you think about what you might be a member of, uh, you're a member because you want to support the organization fundamentally. Uh, you may not have the wherewithal or the time or the ability to get out and plant trees, but you appreciate and respect uh, what the organization does. Uh, you know, the Outdoor Circle has does a lot more than just planting trees and protecting scenic viewplanes. It's advocating all over the place, and I, I recommend people go to our policy positions on uh, the website to see more about uh, what we focus on because it 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 is a lot um, but if you want to join you go to the website just click on membership and join uh, we have essentially a, a pay what you like model uh, and that allows you to join any or all branches as well so when you're joining you're joining the outdoor circle but most people uh choose to also join a branch and that's where their focus will be so you're in manoa and and that branch would be con, uh, concerned with things in manoa and and keeping that area clean green and beautiful so uh you may want to be getting involved in uh, tree planting you might want to adopt a park as part of uh what your mission is you may want to write testimony you may want to help in uh cataloging our history we've uh have a recent agreement with the state archives where we're cataloging 
tens of thousands of documents so that uh, researchers can go back in the past and find out how this organization has had so many impacts from uh, everything from the you know, women's movement to environmental uh, to uh, uh, lawsuits involving, um, you know, protecting the scenic view plane. There's all types of information there. So we need helpers uh, and volunteers for all kinds of areas. And if you see a need, then bring it to our attention, because chances are, if uh, it, it, like any organization, it's about people getting involved. We have a tiny staff uh, at the headquarters. This is a volunteer run and led and uh, organization. So it's all about members, volunteers, caring about their community and stepping up to the plate, making a difference. So how did you specifically, I know you told me about how you learned about the organization, but how did you end up getting involved? You just were interested because you heard about them and then you. Uh, I had uh, experience uh, and I was managing a couple of other organizations uh, before this and the um, actually the job listing came up and I was uh, just submitted my um, my resume to the board and went in and uh, talked to them and, and looked at what this organization was and where it might go and what its needs were. And we found that it was a good match. And that was about eight years ago. Oh, nice, nice. I was also looking at uh, some of the things you have on your website, and I saw there's something called the Exceptional Tree Program. Can you tell us about that? So we have uh, we spearheaded a program, the Exceptional Tree Act in 1975. This gives a heightened level of um, recognition and protection for trees that are deemed exceptional. Uh, the counties administer this through the Arborist Advisory Committees, but the Outdoor Circle, I believe, is the only uh, place where you can find all exceptional trees, where we have all kinds of metrics on these trees, their height, their crown spread why they were um, you know uh, nominated to this list and it's a pretty uh, stringent qualifications we'd like to see a, a, a secondary list come out of trees that maybe don't meet that threshold of exceptional trees but that are um, certainly worthy of, of um, uh, stronger protections and recognition so that's something we'll be looking forward to in the future but the exceptional trees map that we have you can go on our website and and uh, download that or the app and we have walks where you can uh you know the little blue dot follows you around Kapilani park or or many different places and shows you okay here's this tree here's its history and we're looking at also adding different layers on there which might include different stories um, or specific histories about um, maybe who planted this tree or um, maybe the whole grove when it was planted um, and what would the impetus behind that? So the Exceptional Trees Program is uh, a really important and, and fundamental um, characteristic of our state's uh, desire to protect trees. And we hope that it just expands greatly from here. Uh, again, they can find that on our on our website if, if our viewers are, are interested. And they should be, because uh, we've got a lot of really magnificent trees here that uh, deserve to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And what kind of uh, qualities do can people look for if they want to nominate an exceptional tree? Because you said some trees don't quite make the qualifications for exceptional. So, uh, you know, what kind of trees would be exceptional? Are they really big well, trees, certain species? It's a, it's a good question. Um, in, in Oahu, it's uh, it can be on private land where the property owner has to sign off or anyone can nominate a tree on public land. Uh, of course, the state has to take care of that. It's age size, uh, rarity, historic and cultural value, aesthetic value, endemic status, and location. So those are the the qualifications that we have. Uh, and, and the counties could be more stringent or have some, uh, some more uh, qualifications for that. But those forms are available on our website. So if people are interested, they can and should nominate trees uh, for exceptional status. And we are unique. Um, as far as I know, in, in the world for people that have an exceptional tree, they actually get to write off the cost of caring for that tree on their taxes. If you filled oh, out your wow. taxes, you see a, on there, you know, it says like, give a dollar for the, you know, the, uh, the election fund. But then it's also, do you have an exceptional tree? It's one of the very few lines on there. So 
it so helps you can nominate it on your property. That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Because your, your tree is going to require care. It's just like uh, any being. And uh, so we want to acknowledge that as a state. And we do and say, hey, if you got this tree and it's an exceptional tree, you're going to get a tax break because we appreciate you taking care of that. That's wonderful. So um, are these exceptional trees, are they marked so people know not to cut them down? Suppose um, suppose when you buy a property, I mean, and you're a new homeowner and you're from out of state, you don't know anything about this exceptional tree program. Um, is it going to be, I, I suppose they could write it in the disclosures, but I mean, I'm just worried that these exceptional trees will be cut down. I think if you have an exceptional tree on your property, you're pretty much going to let any buyer know this is a really <laughs> key feature. Uh, the trees are protected by by law, so you actually have to, you know, seek any permit to uh, to change any things. And we would hope that nobody would would do <laughs> would do that. Um, I, I haven't heard of anything like that. So uh, we are actually looking at how do we write this into uh, getting it into the, an, an MLS or on the uh, uh, it's not property transfer forms, but whatever those are, to say, yes, if you have this, like it is a disclosure, and the same for developers, if they're coming in and and changing, uh, you know, putting up a different building or a new building, that that's automatically flagged in the Department of Planning and Permitting that says, hey, you've got an exceptional tree here, you need to take exceptional care. So that's something that we're exactly working on right at this time is, you know, these uh, sort of uh, systems uh, make it a little bit easier to do that and nothing falls through the cracks. So theoretically, you could nominate a tree on somebody else's property, but they would have to sign off on it. Um, that's no. true. You you could. I mean, essentially, it will be under his, her, their name that are signing the form. So that person would be the one actually uh, you could put the stamp on the envelope, but essentially, yeah, yeah, you could bring that up with somebody and say, hey, Mrs. Tanaka, I, you have an exceptional tree here. I'm going to download this form. I'm going to fill out all the information that I can, and then I'm going to send it in under your name. Is that okay? I think that's the, the, the way to look at it. So yeah, you could facilitate a, a nomination for an exceptional tree. I mean, because I see some kind of really sad things happen. That's why I ask because, you know, sometimes I'm taking a, I take a lot of walks with my dog. And then I noticed that there was a huge mango tree on the corners providing a lot of shade. And then I saw somebody new had moved in the house and they cut the thing down. You know, I mean, I don't know if that would even qualify as an exceptional tree because it's a, a fruit tree. And, it's, you know, but... uh, you know it, it's a great question. That's why I mentioned we need, we need other levels of, of, protection uh, for our trees because you, you even on my street where I live I have a tree but uh, it's it's a space has been made for it in the driveway it's literally a cutout but there's almost no other trees on my street because most we've been losing canopy coverage mm -hmm. every year for decades uh, and this is not mostly on public land it's on private land so those trees that mango tree that you once saw it was a big beautiful mango tree that sort of anchored the neighborhood and now there's nothing there because people cut it down for whatever reasons. But uh, what we really need to focus on at this point, as much as public space is great to focus on, uh, our, our Department of Urban Forestry does a, a, a pretty good job of keeping up the hundreds of thousands of trees they have to maintain. Yeah. What we need to focus on now is private landowners, private individuals, encouraging them not to cut down the big trees especially, but for others also to plant trees, the right tree in the right place with the right care so that it's not gonna hit the power lines and, and those sorts of things. We can do this. It's just a matter of collective will. And um, maybe it's, um, you know, also involves some legislation that would provide some other sort of uh, financial benefits, even though that would be a, really a secondary reason uh, to do that. But whatever we can do helps. Mm -hmm. But the trees don't have to be labeled or anything. If it's uh, they are, some of them are noted, I know that, but others are not, especially if, if you've got a tree on a private piece of property, you may not want people traipsing in to see it. So there's no requirement that they um, allow people on to see those trees. The, the important thing is that they're there and that they're protected. Yeah. I mean, I've seen some in Ala Moana Park that are labeled. I'm wondering if they're exceptional or just because it's a city park. 
that somebody is taking care of it like an arborist and they think it's a nice tree and they just put a nice little label on it because they a have some really are, nice big trees there. Yeah, it's, it's, it might be both. Uh, it might be just to educate the public on what kind of the trees are, uh, uh, what kind of trees they are, or it may also have an exceptional listing next to it. And if it does, it'll certainly say it's an exceptional tree of, you know, Foster Garden has a number of exceptional trees, which oh, yes. the Beautiful. ladies uh, staffed that uh, visitor center 364 days a year, 363 days a year for many, many decades. So I encourage mm -hmm. people to go down, like you said, Alamana Park. We have a, a great walk. Capulani. Capulani has beautiful trees. We have great guides just to walk down there and learn more about those trees. Um, so I encourage people to use that and and create their own maps as well. I mean, take your kids down there and talk about trees. If you don't know what it is, there's great apps where you can point a picture at a, at a leaf and, and it'll mm -hmm. tell you what kind of tree it is. So uh, great opportunities out there. Um, well, I say, yeah, you could use your app for that. Just go sit under the tree. You don't need an app to enjoy the tree. And we got to remind ourselves that every tree that you're sitting under today, every tree without exception was planted by somebody who cared about people in the future sitting under these trees. They may be 100 years old. They may be older than that, but they were planted deliberately by somebody who was saying, we need this now and in the future, and just had to imagine the beauty of you and your keiki sitting under those trees and having a picnic and all the benefits they provide the cooling streets which makes it a huge difference obviously if you're walking on a street with shade or without shade uh the, the birds that are able to to chirp in them you know it's, it's it's just the physical beauty looking at the tree it's proven to have economic benefits health benefits and, and so many other benefits so you know we got to get out there, plant the trees, encourage your neighbors, nominate exceptional trees and, and do all that you can. Mm -hmm. I also saw on your website, there's something that you guys have called the carbon neutrality challenge. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, this is just a, uh, it, it's a, a, one of the many great programs that we have designed to uh, calculate how much carbon sequestration is uh, occurring from different trees so you could put in a, a, you know what type of tree you have and then uh, how big it is and how much carbon that it's storing so this is one of those benefits that we talk about and some people really love those sorts of things like um, how much stormwater it, it, it might save or how much carbon sequestration yeah. it gives or you know how much energy and dollars you're going to save uh, by having a shade tree keeping your house cool However, people look at the value of trees, it's not an either or, it's a both and. So while you may love the aesthetics or the cooling benefits, other people might be much more um, interested in, in carbon sequestration and, uh, and, and stormwater runoff. So all of those metrics are, are useful and valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's something else called the Kailua um, the Citizen Forester Program as well uh, for the Kailua branch, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, uh, we that that's a program where we train citizen foresters is uh, the the term that we have uh, used, and it's basically going out and finding out where all the trees are. So even though while the the city has a great um, program and robust, and they're always short staffed and underfunded. There's zero question about that. Uh, they do uh, as good of a job as they possibly can, but they don't always know 100% where all their trees are. Uh, so what we do is we go out and we map those trees. Where are they inside of the city in the public rights of way? And so to develop a database and say, okay, you've got 10 monkey pods on this street between here and here, and they're geolocated, they're measured as to the size, the crown spread, uh, different metrics that we collect there. And then through that, we can identify the pukas where maybe a tree was cut down or fell down. Um, trees have a natural lifespan, so we need to replace those trees and we can identify the pukas through that. So the citizen forester initiatives are getting off, that's it's, it's expanded over, and we work with our partners as well in this. Uh, uh, on that one, I believe it was a Smart Trees Pacific. And we go out into the community and teach people how to get these metrics, how to upload them, how to um, verify them with, with each other. So you always have you know partners on that. Another great way to get involved. It's expanded, I, I believe, to mm -hmm. Manoa and to Kalihi. 
And uh, we'll be expanding that more as we look at our city and say, how do we increase canopy coverage where we are losing coverage all the time? And yeah. uh, solutions for the streets seem to be a little bit easier, but you know how parking is in this city, uh, yeah. it, it's, it's tough. And so people are like, well, that tree is where I park my car. Yes, it may be, but uh, yeah, that's also a public right of way. So we've got, it, the issues are not easy. Time, but we can do the best that we can with what we've got. And I think we can, I think we can always do more and we can always look at how do we increase our canopy coverage and provide a a good environment for trees to 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 thrive in. Well, even the amount of concrete we have, because I see a lot of people, what they're doing is that it's exactly the problem where there's a lot of people, um, extended families, which is not necessarily their fault. It's just that, you know, we don't have that much housing here and so um, a small house with a lot of land will be expanded into a huge monster home and then it'll be converted into a complete concrete setting so even all the grass is gone and all the little shrubs are gone and those make a difference too for climate change and also for a runoff for instance right so um, that's happening a lot. And I don't know if um, you guys are doing any work for that, like the problem we're having with, um, you know, people converting their land into concrete. I guess it's it's very hard to do anything for that in general, you know, and then having huge monster homes on top of a small lot. Well, certainly uh, our branches have become involved in that because if it's if it's clean, green, beautiful, sustainable and livable, how do you have a livable street with no trees? Uh, yeah. and no green that it's it's stark it's bleak it's hot and like you said it's it's runoff and and so we the organization um has always taken a position against um encroachment on preservation land conservation land agricultural mm -hmm. lands but also these um variances to zoning that are really egregious going into neighborhoods and we understand people need places to live there's ways we can do this it's not an either or we can have quality places for people to live of all income levels without destroying our green infrastructure. Fine. And we need to plan for that green infrastructure. So we do testify on these things all the time. Uh, sometimes we're successful and sometimes we're not. Uh, it's it's up to this to all of us to decide what kind of environment do we want to live on? Do we want to live on a street with no trees? Yeah. Can we not allow or require that the space be given to trees despite all of the other competing interests that we have exactly what you said total concrete yeah. where does that water go it goes down the street into our storm drains yeah. and it just creates a hot and bleak uh, street so of course those structures we we know would, that there's uh, been issues in, in those that we don't need to get into here but essentially it's making choices collectively and individually that are going to make the difference um, so we are out of time, so we have to wrap it up. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We've been talking with Winston Welch, Executive Director of the Outdoor Circle. Thank you so much for being on the show. And Thank thanks to Michael, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you on February 17th for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My special guest will be Lolita Ayala, Executive Director of the Aloha Animal Sanctuary. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.